It's wonderful to celebrate Jesus. And we're so thrilled to be here with uh, uh, Pastor Atkins and Sister Atkins, Sister Robin, amen, amen, and Brother Milton. And we knew uh, Sister Robin when she was about this high. And uh, we just thank the Lord for her and her mom and dad. Brother and Sister Bradley was a great inspiration in our lives. I look back on those years, was our beginning years of our marriage. Uh, we went uh, to uh, southern Ohio with everything we owned in a Ford Falcon car. I mean everything. So, so that, what did I say? Oh, no, that's where I live. Um, <laughs> southern New England, Connecticut. But uh, God blessed. and uh, Robin, she's closer to God than any of us. John, that was a great song. I enjoyed that. I can sing better than that, but I don't want to. <laughs> Takes a lot, a lot to get me to sing. But I believe I'm among the family of God here, and brothers and sisters in Christ. And we want to receive what God would have us to receive this morning. He has a special touch and a special word and anointing for every one of us. Amen. We're all in this body of Christ together. Amen. And we'll all have the same King, Lord and Savior, King Jesus. Wherever Jesus is, the kingdom is there. Hallelujah. And wherever, you, the, wherever uh, the Lord is, the kingdom is there, and Jesus is in you, and wherever you go, the kingdom goes. I said the kingdom goes. Glory to God. You take the kingdom of God within you. And there is a difference today from the world and from God's people. I want us to look today a modern-day assault and invasion on the body of Christ. Heavenly Father, we need you. We can't do. We can't do it, Lord. We're dependent upon you. Lord, uh, we didn't come in to impress. We didn't come to God to be seen. We come for the kingdom work. And we come, oh God, to be a blessing. And I, I, Holy Ghost, we need you. We're just dependent on you, Holy Ghost. And you said you'd give us the words and you'd, you'd give us uh, the anointing. And, and you, hallelujah, would do the work. So we invite you. We want you. We need you. And we ask God, there's needs here today that only you can fulfill. There's needs here today that only you can make the difference. And Heavenly Father, uh, you want to, you desire to. Glory to God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Somebody say, Lord, have your way in me. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Have your way in me. The biggest problem I got, the biggest uh, mountain I face is me. Not my brother, not my sister, oh Lord, it's me. Amen. The word of God today is under siege and confrontation and arrest. Many are attacking and trying to make havoc of the word of God and to abort the word of God in this nation and in the world and in the church and in you. The devil wants to sift us as wheat. Amen? And we all have the same enemy and enemies. 
Nobody is bigger than the other and we're all just the same and the devil wants you just like he wants me. And he throws the fiery darts and he attacks and he comes as a roaring lion after each one of us in all different kinds of ways. But we have the ammunition and we have the weapons of warfare. Glory to God. We are not helpless this morning. To, de to declare God's word, the world is trying to steal the word of God from us to make it appear as antiquated, misfit, errors, and that it's not the real truth. This Bible doesn't contain the word of God. It is the word of God. Glory to God. Now you can amen me. If you don't amen me, I go on forever. Amens and a hallelujah will get me shorter every time. We are all feeling the experience from all sides on the effects of a declared war on the word of God. The only reason the devil's fighting you, he just wants to get back at God. He don't care about you. You can't bargain with the devil. You can't make an appeasement with the devil. Someone says, well, I, I leave the devil alone and he leaves me alone. No, that don't work. You got an enemy. You got someone that's trying to tear you down and destroy you to get to God the Father. And that's what we're living in. War on the church. To, and it is expelled the word of God to schools and students and state governments and, and all of our communities, our homes and families, workplaces and streets. They're trying to distract us so they can take out the word of God from us and from the church. I want to tell you, the only book that we got has the body of Christ is the Bible, the word of God. There is no other, hallelujah, no other inspired word. There's just the Bible, hallelujah. It's good enough. It was good enough for the early church and it's good enough for us today. We don't have to lay it aside and push it away. No, we got the word of the living God. When I was coming up, there wasn't all that much published of Christian like there is today. You can get Christian reading, books on the internet. You, you can get it all. We used to live in Grand Pastor in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and that was the headquarters of a lot of publishing houses. And it's, it's available on every hand. But the enemy... In this day and time that we're living in, he's trying to take the words right out of your mouth. I said he's trying to take the words right out of your mind. I said he's trying to take the words right out of your heart. Hold fast to the Holy Bible as the word of God for your roadmap. John 17, 17 says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. That's being questioned today. You say, well, it says it in the Bible. Well, But I, 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 I don't believe that. 
Well, it's in the Word of God. Well, I don't, I don't see it that way. I don't have that interpretation of it. <laughs> and that's what we're up against. The Word is the Word. It will always be the Word. Heaven and earth will pass away, but His Word will never, never pass away. And church, we got, when everything's said and done, when the songs has been sung and the prayers prayed, we've got to be standing on the word of the Lord. His word, hallelujah, his word remaineth true. You can have your readers digest interpretation all you want. God's word it's not a foolish misfit or errors in default. 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration or God breathe of inspiration of God and it is profitable for doctrine, instructions. When did we ever get where we don't need, don't need instructions? Doctrine. Oh, doctrine. No, no doctrine. Instructions. We all need instructions. I'm 48 years old and I need instructions. Plus, I didn't say plus. <laughs> Some of us think we know it all. We think our interpretation and our thought and our, we all have a philosophy. Everybody has philosophy. My philosophy is it. I think this. I come to this conclusion. I believe it's this way. Well, if that doesn't line up with the word of God, the scripture says, let every man, let every man be a liar. There's been many and many times I ate my words. Profitable for, for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions or training in righteousness. What's right, righteousness? Well, that's a word today that you don't hear too much about. But righteousness is right standing. Don't you know the world is out of ba balance? It's not the believer in Christ who's following the word of God is out of balance. It's the world, and the world will always be the world. Don't get frustrated or upset because the world is like it is. You just go on and march in the word and march what God wants you to do. If you listen to the word in the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, trust and obey. Glory to God. It'll take you all the way. But if you're worrying about how bad this is and how bad that is and what's that turning to? I'm going to tell you. The world will be the world when Jesus comes back. So get your eyes on Jesus. Get, oh, get your eyes on what counts. Get your eyes off of Fox News and NBC and CBS News. Get your eyes on Jesus. 2 Peter 1.21, for the prophecy, not the gift, but the inspired word of God, came not in old times, biblical times, by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. I tell you, this word came down from heaven. This is the inspired, the, the the breath of God word. Whew. Our job is to let the word of God be the word of God in our lives. Well, I'm praying about it, brother. 
what are you praying about? Well, I don't know these scriptures. I, I'm praying about, you don't have to pray about, is the Bible the right or wrong? What the Bible says is wrong is wrong. What the Bible says is good is good. You don't have to pray whether it's right to do certain things when the Bible has already already said it's a wrong and sin. We're calling sin righteousness and calling righteousness antiquated and old fashioned. But we need a divine shaking. I don't hear no man, oh, amens on too much. I'm getting longer. Uh-oh, I'm already five minutes over. Psalm 119 and 160 says, The word is true from the beginning, and from every one of thy righteous judgment endureth forever. The word is going to outlive you and me. The world <laughs> Hallelujah. The world can do what it wants to do, but the, the word of God is going to endure forever. So where should you be getting your answers from? Who you should be looking to? Who, who should base your philosophy upon? Base your living upon? Some movie star, some psychic, some talk show on TV, some book. He says, his word will endure forever. Philippians 3.16 says, Nevertheless, whereunto we have already let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Well, where in that world, where does that take you? So many times in the Christian world, we have this rule over here, that rule over there, this rule here, that rule up there, that world over, rule over there. This one's 12 inches. This one's for a foot. This is 8 inches for a foot. This is 16 inches for a foot. This is uh, 13 inches for a foot. And we're trying to walk. To, we're staggering. Walk by the same rule. What's that mean? Jesus Christ is the rule. Now, I should hear some applause and praise the Lord. If Jesus is not our rule, we're in trouble. Jesus is our rule. And I want to tell you, he didn't come to condemn you or bring damnation. He came, hallelujah, to save you and lift you up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Some walk by other people's convictions, other people's traditions. But we need to be settled on God's word. We need a shovel. Need a lot of shoveling going out. All the grandma was great, but just because grandma said it doesn't mean it's the truth. Saints, we can't afford to lose the word of God in the house of God right under our noses. Too much quoting from this world instead of quoting from God's word. You come to Christ by the Holy Spirit. You are filled with a baptism of the Holy Spirit 
by the word of God. How do I know that's real? Because my Bible tells me it's real. I don't have to back down from the, the, the baptism of the Holy Ghost and speaking in other tongues. Why? Because it's Bible. It's in the Bible. Well, God hasn't showed it to me yet. He hasn't showed me the angel wings yet, but <laughs> I still believe I'm going to heaven. You just got to accept what God has laid before your pathway. And believers, we have the word of God. We have the word of God. Don't believe all this politician stuff. Believe God's word. Believe God's word. Believe God's word. Believe God's word. Thank God for conviction, not condemnation. He come to save and to seek. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me, draw me, draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. The la you know everybody's not going to be raised up in the last day? The day before the return of the Lord, or the day of the return of the Lord, not everybody's going up. There's going to be multitudes alive, standing. One will be left, and the other will be taken. Two in bed, one will be taken, the other will be left. The graveyards, one will be taken, and the other will be left. This is serious stuff. This is not play church. And I believe we're living close to the return of the Lord. I, I, I believe the Holy Ghost is telling us, uh, rush, rush. Alarm yourself. This is no time to play around and fall behind. What a sad day. It would be to lose out with God now. I had a friend, buddy, and I witnessed to him several years back. We were, we were a lot younger then. And I'd tell him about the Lord, but, and he was he's just a good guy, just a likable person, just a swell friend. But, but he didn't see his need of the Lord. And I, and I tried to share the Lord with him. And then I got a call that he had a heart attack and died. I couldn't believe at our age back then, I, I couldn't believe that he was gone, Brother John. Just in a moment, in a second, second of an eye. And it disturbed me. And I was praying. I said, God, did he get ready in the last minute? He knew the gospel. I told him the gospel. Others told him the gospel. Lord, did he make it? Did he make it? In my heart, I was saying, oh, I hope he made it. I hope he made it. Somehow he made it. And the Holy Spirit gave me an answer. I said, God, did he make it? And the Holy Spirit sent me a word. And he said, I gave him opportunity. What more do you want? We have opportunity. If you go to hell, or if I go to hell, it won't be God's fault. It won't be the Lord's fault. It won't be the Holy Spirit's fault. It'll be your fault. And don't try to accuse somebody else for sending you to hell. It's a choice you make. What is the worst and gross sin in this world today? What is the worst sin? I believe it's impartable sin personally. It could be other too, but I believe it's impartable sin too. And that is the rejection of Jesus Christ. The greatest sin today is the rejection of the Lord Savior. The one who died on the cross. The one who gave his life. The greatest sin that ever has.
If you're rejecting him today, you're sinning. If you're ignoring him today, you're rejecting him. And that's the biggest sin there is. I don't have time for Jesus and that stuff. That's the worst sin you can do. The other morning I was up about 5 o'clock in the morning and was praying and I says, Oh, Lord, here I am in this big world. Coal miner's kid. Grandfather was an alcoholic. Ben's drinker. My daddy was. My uncle was a full, full alcoholic and Dysfunctional was way up here. <laughs> we were way down there. Lived in the coal mining camp. My little old mother, 98 pounds, got desperate. We couldn't go on much more. We was at the end of the rope. It was down to life or death, literally. Literally. And my mother... Cried out to the Lord. And somebody came to the door and knocked on the front door. My mom went and she opened the door and there's where Jesus and she said he said, Will you let me in? <laughs> Will you let me in? She said, Jesus, we desperately need you. We have nothing else. See, down to the empty bottle, we don't have nothing else. Come in. And Jesus walked in. He come in our, our home. Mom got saved, filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and God lifted her up, and he was doing wonderful things in the church. And, and, but my dad, he despised it all. One, one Sunday, we was coming in from church, and uh, you could look at the kitchen out, the, out on the, the road. We didn't have streets. You just looked out there on the road. And he said, I'm going to stop her from church. I'm going to make her quit working in church. And he was just uh, mumbling, you know, to himself. And he was eating there something, and he got choked. And he tried to, un you know, get, get free from being choked, and he got worse. Finally, he fell down on his knees, and he was choking. And he said it is mom, oh, God, I won't say nothing. Help me get, get <laughs> unchoked. And it went on down. We come in. I remember the funny look on his face. My mom said, Bro, is something wrong? No, there's nothing wrong. He said, I believe God was trying to kill me. <laughs> in about two years, my mom just kept praying. She says, He's not too big for God. She was 98 pounds, just a little woman. He's not too big for God. And he was like all muscles working the coal mine since he was 14 years old. He's not too big for God. And he got saved. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, He got saved, delivered, set free. And we was taking kids to church. A little church we went to didn't have no bus ministry, but people wanted to go from, from the coal camp. So we had an old pickup truck, an old car, and we took them, but my dad got the burden of taking kids and people to church. And he went out and bought a Volkswagen van. You remember that hippie van? I mean, it was nice. I mean, it was nice. We, it was better than our car, and he bought that to pick up people to take them to church. So we have as many people can get. You'd be surprised how many people can get in a Volkswagen van. <laughs> Back then, there was no seat belts. And we would just shuffle, shuff them in, stick them in, you know, and go to church. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. And the, his old buddies 
drinking buddies, gambling brothers, uh, buddies, said, what happened to Burl Martin? He don't drink with us and party with us and go, go to the beer joint with us. What happened to him? Someone said, well, he goes to church. Church? Yeah, and he's got a, a, he's got a church bus. He's taking people to church in. And they couldn't believe it. And we took people to church, service after service, jam-packed. Some of those kids that went and got saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. Some of them's working for God today. People, lies, mom and dad. Did, they, did, did anybody pay for the bus? Well, my dad paid for it. Who paid for the insurance? My dad. Who, who paid for the gas? My dad. He felt he could do that for God. Somebody said, well, I don't have nothing to do in the church. My, my dad wasn't appointed. He's just a whole coal miner. But he wanted to see others saved. Six and a half years ago, I had cancer. Major surgery. Found four tumors in a mass. Took it out as all four tumors had cancer. And I uh, Said doctor said you have to have radiation. And then after twenty eight treatments of radiation, you have to have chemo, a surgery, more surgery, and chemo. And I went through that. But I felt the Holy Spirit. Someone said to me. Brother Martin, I don't understand. You're a pastor and you got cancer. You're dying. I said, it rains on the just and unjust. It, this is part of this world. I said, I've served the Lord since I was 16 years old. How could I throw up anything in his face? He's been nothing but good to me. Amen. He's been nothing but good to me. But I did say, I did have a prayer to the Lord. I said, Lord, I'm trusting you. But if you would, through this, would you teach me? W would you instruct me? Uh, would you just help me and learn things I've never known? before. I want to tell you, he did. One thing I learned was on your deathbed and you're facing eternity, you look around, you see your treasures and they're just stuff. And in fact, junk. And some people down here, that's all what they're counting on is their treasures here instead of their spiritual life. Instead of witnessing, instead of doing something for God in their relationship. You've got to work on your relationship. Pastor can't give you no relationship with God. People come to church and say, I'm empty all week. Just fill me up. You think you're at a gas pump. You paid your tithes. Did he fill you up? You ain't prayed all week. You ain't did. I know but words ain't on word, but I like it. <laughs> ain't did nothing all week to, towards your spiritual life. And then come to church and I'm really sweet. You ask my wife. Well, don't ask my wife. Sometimes she tells the truth. On, a woman will tell about anything. I tell you, they they'll tell on you. The Word of God in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Joel 2:28 and 29. And it shall come to pass after that I'll pour out my Spirit 
Upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. Oh, God, we need your spirit. We need an outpouring. The early rain. We need the latter rain. Acts 1 8, it was fulfilled, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Jerusalem, and in other, in all Judea, and in Jerusalem, and in all Samaria. Samaria. Thank you, sir. Uh, I needed that. Thank you. I'm going to take you with me. I'm willing to go. Hallelujah. Praise God. We need the Holy Ghost. I said the church needs the Holy Ghost. We've ran off without him in many areas. You need the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost. I need the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Our job is to let the Holy Ghost do his job. John 14, 26 says, The Holy Spirit will teach you all things. This world's in trouble. This world is getting fearful. This world is getting shaky. There's people don't know what to do. They don't know where to turn. They don't know who to look to. This is a this is a great time for harvest. Well, what's your name? What? Well, do it. <laughs> Go do it. You got to have more than the sign out front on the highway. You, you got to be filled up and overrunning. Glory to God. When people come in, glory to God, they feel and sense the Holy Spirit. I was five years old. I, the only thing I heard about God was his name in vain. My dad one time, he, he come in and he was just cussing God. I mean, he said everything to God you could think of cussing and calling him names and stuff. And I was just a little boy, and I says, I, I, I don't know God, but I don't think you should be talking to God like that. I hid behind the door. I says, lightning's going to strike him. <laughs> but the baptism is for now. The church needs it now. Hallelujah. He puts healing. He puts healing in uh, in our body. Psalm one hundred seven twenty says he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. He sent his word. Yes. Romans ten seventeen says. Faith comes by the word. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. Hebrews 11.1 1 tells us what faith is. Now faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. But how do you get faith? Some of faith in faith. Try to build up your faith. Try to work your faith. You know, get your, get your, get your faith up and, and, and muster up some faith. You need faith, and you get a little bit, a little bit, and then you go out, and it leaks out. Right there tells us how, to, how, how and where to get faith. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When I went through that cancer, I had a prayer cloth. 
and it held, almost, it was about this big. I keep it on the back of my chair. It has all scriptures of the scriptures of healing, needs, men, and underneath it has a prayer, but it's all the word of God. I remember one night we was at the lowest. We laid there in bed, and I said, Jeannie, another bad report from the doctor. I'm just sick of bad reports, bad reports, bad. I can't take no more bad reports. And I just felt myself just sinking, just going down, sinking. She said, Jean, Jean. She got that prayer cloth that had all the scriptures on it. We got up and she started reading it. Oh, God's word. He says, I'll heal you. I'll deliver you. I'll set you free. Hallelujah. Greater is me that's in you than he that's in the world. And I had all them promise. Every promise in the book is mine. And I claimed that. And I started climbing. I started climbing out of that hole. Up Michigan, I won't say this, but I had potholes. I went to Michigan, pastor, and I thought, boy, everybody up here has got new cars. This is where they make them all. My goodness, I've seen cars that were so rest of the way, all you could see wheels, wheels and a seat and a steering wheel. They were just, and potholes everywhere, potholes. That's what you got without the word. You got the word, you got everything. I said the word of the Lord. The, God spoke the word into existence by his word, spoken word. He said it, I believe it. Well, this preacher this, that, and preacher that, and I gotta go there to get faith. Why don't you just dust that? Bible you got on the coffee table off, dust it off, and get in there and say what Jesus said. Jesus, uh, Jeannie, Jeannie got a Bible, with all the words of Jesus, just what Jesus said, red, all the red. The red's for you! For the church! The anointing's in the red! The healing's in the red! Deliverance is in the red. Hallelujah. So stand up and praise the Lord, brother. You've got to praise. You've got to praise. Just praise him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Stand and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's just open our hearts to the Lord. Raise your hands to the Lord. And let the Holy Spirit just minister. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Glory to God. You're sick. You may have cancer, like I had cancer. There's a specialist here. I said, Dr. Jesus is in the house. Glory to God. And he'll heal your body. He'll deliver disease. because sometimes it's not God's will that you suffer. It's God's will that you be healed. You don't have to pray about your healing. All you have to do is pray, hallelujah, God's word to be healed and thank God. After that, you just keep thanking God. I got anointed and prayed by, prayed uh, everyone I one minister's convention, they, they all prayed for me. I just stood up there and they prayed for me. But then, there was a time that I had to thank God for healing me, Lord. What Was it there? Yeah, it was there. But I 
spoken by faith. Rise. Rise and walk. I said rise and walk whatever your need is. Some people are waiting. They're waiting to be pulled and begged and, and drawn and try everything they can do to get the to get up and get it from the Lord. But rise and walk. <laughs> rise and walk. Glory to God. Don't hold that burden. Don't hold that burden. Don't nurse that burden. You need prayer. I'd like for you to just come up here. You don't know the Lord. You're unsaved. You come right, just come right up here. We're going to pray together. Just the line up here. Got any needs? Got any prayer? You need healing for your body. You need deliverance. You need salvation in your family. Just step out by faith. Just step out by faith. Just step out by faith. You're on the side of the Lord. I said, <laughs> well, he's on my side. No, you're on the side of the Lord. 